And by doing me a favor, look at the person next to you, just clap and say, it's good to see you, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, it's good to see you. Y'all, it's preaching time tonight. Okay, I thought I was at my church. Let's try it again. It's preaching time tonight. This is a word church. I said, this is a word church. This is a church that loves to hear the preaching of the gospel. This is a church that responds to the preaching of the gospel. And this is a church that believes that man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I'm so grateful to God tonight. We have a preacher in the place tonight. And God has sent us one of his best preachers, and I'm blessed of God that he's here. I had the privilege of meeting our preacher several months ago now. And uh, every now and then, sometimes you meet people. God forges friendships for the faithful. And every now and again you meet people and it's as if you've known each other forever. And the Lord just kind of knits your heart together and you know uh, that this is someone you're going to be around for a long time. That's, that's what happened when I met our preacher. Uh, I was preaching a revival and he was hosting us. And, uh, every time I got in this car, I told him, I said, your car is a church on wheels. Because uh, every time we got in the car, we had revival before and after revival. Uh, as he just began to pour into my life. And uh, you, you all know, I'm not a perfect person, but I am a spiritual person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not a perfect person, but I'm a spiritual person. And uh, one of the things that I believe is I don't believe things happen by coincidence or accident. I believe they happen by divine providence. And uh, I shared with him that several conversations that we had in the car, it was as if he had peeked into my prayer closet. Wow. It was as if I had just finished praying about something. And the Lord just dropped it on his heart, and he just began to share and to express. And my life was made the better. And I told him that week, I said, you're my big brother. He said, you're my little brother. And uh, he has shown himself to be a brother. When my grandfather passed away a few months ago, Pastor King hit me up, and he said, do I need to come to Houston? Do I need to be with my brother? And he doesn't know just how much that meant to me, to see that message uh, that says, I'm going to come be with you. He is one of the most genuine men of God that I've ever met. I meet preachers almost on a daily basis, and I, you know, I don't really like preachers. Amen. <laughs> I don't really like them very much. Amen. But I want to thank God that when I met this preacher, uh, that I, I know him, I love him, I appreciate him, and as long as the Lord puts breath in my body, I'm going to always honor him, I'm going to always value our relationship. And this is his first time in the Freedom Church, but it certainly won't be his last time in the Freedom Church. Uh, he is my big brother, and I'm grateful to God that he has accepted the invitation to come tonight at his church. They are having vacation Bible school. They've got a summer camp that's going on right now with nearly 100 young people, but he's not there. He's here with us tonight. I thought somebody would be clapping for that. With us tonight. He is the proud young humble senior pastor of the Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church in the city of Dallas, Texas. And he's here tonight with us in Houston, and I'm blessed of God to have him here. He's a scholar with a holler. He got the scoop and the hoop. And I'm grateful to God that he's here to bless us in this pretty place. Will you stand to your feet? Extend your hands towards God's man tonight. Pray now that God will give him a word that will challenge us. Pray now that God will give him a word that will convict us. Pray now that God will give him a word that will challenge us. On this first church anniversary, we don't ever get another first again. But we're grateful to God to have the Lord's preacher here tonight to be with us. God, tonight, touch the mouth message and ministry. Dr. Kenneth W. King. Empty of all self, fill them afresh with Holy Ghost power. Have your way tonight through this, your preacher. And Lord, if it's not too much to ask, save at least one soul. And we'll shout like it's 10,000. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it all. If you love the Lord, you ought to say amen. And amen again. Will you put your hands together and receive our preacher tonight? The Reverend Dr. Kenneth W. King. Come on, let's receive it. Come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands and receive 
the man of God today. Ready to preach now. 
Gospel recorded by Luke, Luke chapter 13. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 13. Josh Daniels, you'll ever be in my heart. I love you, sir. Amen. I love you. Amen. Love you. Thank God for God putting folk together. Amen. Amen. Good folk. Amen. I had some folk in my life. It wasn't good to me, no good for me. That go seven y'all got in there. They wasn't good to me, and they wasn't good for me. Gospel recorded by Dr. Luke. Luke chapter 13, verse number 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity for 12, for 18 years, and was bowed together, and could no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her and said unto him, said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. He laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. Thank you, Lord and glorified God. The rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said to the, unto the people, that are there not six days which a man ought to work and in them there therefore come and heal this woman and not thou on the Sabbath day? And the Lord answered and said unto them, Thou hypocrites, yeah, 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 yeah. doest thou teach one you on the Sabbath to loosen your oxen or his ass from the stalls and lead them away watering? And ought not that woman be a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? These 18 years be loosed from the bonds on the Sabbath day? And when he said these things, all of his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. I want to talk from the subject, I'm still here. I'm still here. After all I've been through, in these 12 years, there ought to be five or six of y'all in freedom say, I'm still here. One of the things, one of the things, one of the things that I believe every believer ought to come to grips with is that is, before you leave this earth, you will leave here with some scars. Life, life is not always going to go the way you planned it. Uh, Job testified of it because Job said, man born of a woman is of a few days and those days are filled with some trouble. David testified of that same fact by saying, I was born and shaped in sin and shapen in iniquity. Paul testified by saying, listen, I count not myself to have arrived. Yeah. And then if that's not enough, Jesus leaves us a message by telling us in this world, you're going to have some trouble. Yes. Our text shows us, uh, shines a spotlight on a lady who suffered for 18 years. The text tells us that she had life scars. Now listen, brothers and sisters, you, you gotta understand something. If the Son of God, if the Lord's only begotten will leave this earth with some scars, who on earth do you think you are? Here, here in our text, Dr. Luke shines a light as the Lord is now teaching uh, his ministry to the masses. As he's teaching, after all, Jesus is now speaking. After speaking to his disciples, he turns and he's in a synagogue on a particular day. And on that same day, a woman came to the synagogue who was bent but not broken. She was bent 18 years, but she wasn't broken. She, she wasn't like some of us. After we go and get our nails done, 
and then cut your pinky toe too short. You lay out two Sundays. Here's a woman who was bent, but she wasn't broken. She did not allow her infirmities, stay with me, to keep her from coming to worship. Every, every time that the synagogue came together, that this woman come, oh, she didn't have the proper posture, but she was still here. She walked in, and as she would come in, Jesus was teaching a message. And as he was teaching in, in the synagogue, the text said there was a woman in the congregation who had had an infirmity for 18 years. It was an infirmity that, that caused her to be bent over. But yet at the same time, she still showed up. How many of us have our own share of infirmities, but we still, come on in the room with me. You still showed up. Look, look at her condition, look at her condition. The text says she was crippled and she was bound by a spirit. She was crippled because of her issue. She was bound because of her adversary. She was crippled. Dr. Luce places, listen, he places in this narrative about this woman's uh, her condition as Jesus is now preaching to the masses. He talks about the fact that Jesus looks at this woman and as he's speaking to her, he, you see Jesus' mission was not to the disciples, but to the masses. And as he's speaking to the masses, he sees this woman within the midst of this congregation and she's there and she needs to be loosed from her infirmity. She had been crippled by life's crisis. Brothers and sisters, you gotta understand something. We all will be crippled by life crisis. There are things will happen to us that will cause a crippling effect. Uh, you, you may call it cancer, you may call it kids going bad, boy going wild, divorce, disaster, disease. Life can cripple us. Life can bend us and life can almost break us. But all I'm suggesting to you is no matter what you're going through, have this kind of testimony that no matter what I'm facing, I'm still I'm still here. Listen, you've got to deal with the world, the flesh, and the devil. But no matter what, there is some brightness somewhere. Jesus, look, look at the Lord. The Lord looks at her as she comes in and he sees her and he notices that she was crippled. She was bent. But she wasn't broken. You know, brothers and sisters, your greatest blessing will come through your greatest adversity. God moves better when men and women are broken. God can touch a strange heart. And for listen, for these many years, 18 years, this woman was bent, but she wasn't broken. Now this woman was different from that woman with the issue for 12 years. Because the woman with the issue for 12 years, she only, she reached out to God by faith. For her testimony was, if I can just touch it. Yeah. But this woman, listen, every Sabbath day, yeah. Yeah. bit, but she showed up. Yeah. And she showed up and just so happened it was on that particular Sabbath that she walks into the synagogue that Jesus was teaching the word of God. Yeah. It's all to be good news to somebody. Because yeah. today may be your day. Yeah that you can tune in to the master and today is the day of your deliverance. Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and as he's teaching in the synagogue, Jesus notices her and the Bible says as he looks at her, as he's teaching, he says, woman, yeah, yeah. you are loose yeah, yeah. from your infirmity. Yeah, yeah. And notice, and then after he spoke a word and then he touched her, this woman's deliverance came by a word from the Lord. God spoke and listened. She was loose from her infirmity. 
It didn't matter if she had faith of the size of a mustard seed. It didn't matter. All she knew was the Lord spoke a word. Yes. How many in here now know that the Lord can speak yes. and man can live? Yes. And that same God that can speak, man can literally die. He, he spoke with that power. Yes. I said that power, power in the word of God. Yes. How do you know that power? Because the word is a lamp unto my feet. The word is a light unto my path. But the Lord, the word of God is strength. And she found strength in his word. She, he spoke a word to her infirmity and the text tells her that she was made better. That's some of us right here now. All we need now is a word. Anybody need just a word? I, 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 I don't quit worrying. I just need God to speak to my situation. I, and, and, and I'm tuning in. I'm listening. I'm still here. I'm waiting on him. And, and notice when the Lord touched her. This was bless me, y'all. Her conduct changed. For as soon as the Lord touched her, the Bible said she glorified God. She got excited about God. Anybody in here can get excited about what God has to say to your life. She, she glorified God. In other words, when she came in contact with Christ, she started shouting. Now, I don't understand how some of us can come into contact with Christ and never move. He, he's fire, as Jeremiah says, shut up in my bones. And listen, he's strength when I'm weak. And then some folk can come in here and never move. But when you come in contact with Christ, if you got to go by yourself, you stand on your own feet. You lift up your own hand. It doesn't matter who role you sit on. When you come in contact with Christ, all you can say is, God's been good to me. I she started shouting before the organ started playing. She started shouting long before the benediction. She started shouting at the contact of the Lord. And brothers and sisters, sometimes we wait too long to start our shout. She started shouting. And if you keep reading the text, I'm going to drop down come right back up. When she started shouting, listen, other folks started. Check it out, check it out, watch it, watch it. But when she got excited, then the critics started criticizing. You look at the text, she starts shouting, and instead of them getting happy with her, instead of them getting happy for her, instead of them recognizing who she was, all they started doing was critics right there in the text. They started criticizing. Those, listen, those religious and self-righteous folks, they were all interested in the law, not love. They weren't looking at the goodness of God. They didn't see the grace of God. They started criticizing. You know what that problem was? They were too busy to worried about donkeys in their ass. Yeah. 
say grace. You looking for love. You don't recognize love. See, the problem with those religious folk is they live by live life by the law. The thou shall not. But we live by listen love and not that we can't. I mean I would do good. We live by grace. We walk by faith. We live by grace. By grace we've been saved. We ain't coming in all strength. I came to Jesus all next up. And the truth is, when I get out of this suit, I'm still Sabbath law. And he goes into this whole dialogue about the Sabbath law and how they worried about the law and donkeys and, and oxen and over here. Over here, you still worried about the ass. That's what they worried about. Right and, 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 and as he comes into the text, he looks at it and they became critical. And then all of a sudden, Bible said as they started criticizing and looking crazy at the Lord, the Lord rebukes them. Thank you, Lord. Now notice she didn't have nothing to say to them. Y'all didn't catch it. She didn't have nothing to say to her critics. She didn't have nothing to say to them folk that didn't want her to be healed. Now they knew she should have been healed. And so Jesus goes on to correct him, but look at me, don't read it too fast. Watch it. He said, listen, you should have been glad because she's a sister. She's a child of Abraham. You better be careful because everybody don't want to see the Lord bless your life. She's a sister. She's a daughter of Abraham. She, listen, she's one of us. You know, strangest thing is to me, is that most times when Christians get shot, they shot by another Christian. We don't get shot on the street, we get stabbed in a pew. We, 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 get, we get a good kiss on the face and then a little saying, you know, all the not do this. Freedom don't be that way. Everybody ain't gonna come in like you. you Fix you. You can't straighten you up. If Mama couldn't straighten you up, you left her house. You can't straighten you up. Can't nobody straighten you up. Thank you, I'm gonna find my own little group. Y'all, y'all that got a choir. I'm gonna work right over here. 
Listen, you can't fix you. Can I tell you the truth? And I, 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 I got I got a doctor appointment next week, but doctor can't fix me. I, I don't take no medicine, but when my head hurts, but I take a little aspirin or something. Aspirin don't fix me. I, I'm learning now to take stuff and pray. But sometimes they don't need me. And sometimes they give me too much strong and not enough strength. Sometimes it's too much strength. Sometimes I have to pray because I can't pronounce it. But I take it. She couldn't straighten her. That's what the book said. She couldn't straighten herself up. And many times we walk in and walk out because we keep trying to do only that which the Holy Ghost can do. Y'all, 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 y'all scared of the Holy Ghost? You know, let, let me bring it down. Let me bring it to Houston, the Holy Spirit. You, know, I'm right you listen, you got to give room for the Holy Ghost to work some stuff out. You, 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 all you got to do is show up and watch the Holy Ghost show out. How you know he'll show out? Because you're still here. You're big, but you're here. She couldn't straighten herself up. She couldn't lift herself. You listen, brother and sister. I don't care how much, how much, I don't care how much stuff you do. It won't lift you up. And if it do, it only lift you for a little while. I'm trying to find my crowd. I know, I know some of y'all. Y'all just drink communion juice. That's from y'all. Sometimes, sometimes it's down to hear this and try to. Sometimes it's hearing this. Sometimes I'm just trying to. That you is right there. I see you leaning. You know, you gotta, don't lean hard. Don't lean hard. I see you out there. I'm, you with me now? Sometimes it ain't a whole lot. I just need a five dollar bag. I ain't even I, I just need to ride with one. Just trying to straighten myself up. But I'm telling you right now, you get straight for a minute. Now, come on. You get straight for a minute. You get on the cool for a minute. But then after you finish, you still be. You just don't know you be. And, and she could not. And which, which, which presupposes she tried. She tried to do it. She, she went to doctors. She tried all the doses, but she could not straighten herself up. Listen, listen, the text tells me that when she did get straight, she ended up being contagious. About now, y'all. When she did get straight, she ended up being contagious. Why she was bent. Didn't nobody fool her. Why she was bent? Couldn't help herself. When nobody deal with that, you ain't got to see it now. But once she got straight, that's what the book said. She couldn't lift herself and she couldn't get it straight. And anybody out there still trying to just every time you just jump right out. You trying to get it straight. Before you know it, you're creeping, you're trying to do it. Because you're trying to get straight. But all I'm suggesting to you. But when the Lord put his hands on, I, I, I feel it moving now. He can make put his hands ready to straighten this thing up. And when you do, you're going to get contagious. Because when you get to verse 17, not only was she rejoicing, but then everybody else started rejoicing. I'm out of here, brother. You can go on every way if you want to. Listen, all I'm suggesting to you is that if you get straight, you'll get contagious. You're looking at me funny and let me run to the scriptures before I run to your address. You remember David in Psalm 34, don't you? David was in a cave called Adullam. And he was in there. And if you read that text in the Samuel, in the book of Samuel, you'll find out he's in there with some broke folks, some depressed folks, and some messed up folks. But David made up his mind. And David looked around and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I will bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast of the Lord. The humble shall see thereof and be glad. What thing have I desired of the Lord? And that's what I'm going to seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to the whole the beauty of the Lord. And David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And then all of a sudden, those folks that were desperate, those folks that were 
to say thank you, Lord. Try!